The fifth most common question asked by the non-Muslim is, why does Islam allow a Muslim man who have more than one wife? What does Islam say? Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number three, marry women of a choice in twos, threes or fours. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. Quran says, marry women of a choice in twos, threes or fours. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. That means only if you can do justice, can you marry two, three or four, otherwise marry only one. Quran also says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 129, it is difficult to be just between your wives, but don't turn away from them altogether. Many people think it is compulsory in Islam that you should have four wives. It is not compulsory in Islam to have four wives. It is optional. Marrying more than one woman is optional in Islam. It is mubah. But if you marry more than one woman, and if you don't do justice, then you have a problem. So if you marry more than one woman, you should be able to do justice between them. Let us analyze what are the logical reasons why Islam permits a Muslim man to have more than one wife. By nature, we know males and females are born in equal proportion. But in the pediatric age itself, you ask any medical doctor, he will tell you, that medically the female sex is the stronger sex the female child has more immunity than a male child the female child can fight the germs and diseases much better than the male child so in pediatric age itself there are more deaths among the male children as compared to female children so in the pediatric age itself there are more females as compared to males there are wars taking place in the wars there are more men who are being killed as compared to women. As life goes on, deaths take place due to accidents, due to alcoholism, due to drug addiction, due to disease. In all these cases, more males are dying as compared to females. And today's statistics tell us that the average span of a woman is much more than the average span of a man. Today, there are more females in the world as compared to males. In some third world countries, like India, where I come from, the female population is less than the male population. And the reason is because of female infanticide and female feticide. There's a program by the name Let Her Die. Under the banner assignment, it came on BBC, where a British reporter by the name of Emily Beckenin, she says that every day, more than 3,000 fetuses are being aborted after they identified that they're females. In India alone, more than 3,000 fetuses are being aborted after they identified that they're females. If you multiply this number by 365, the number of days in a year, we get a figure of more than 1 million fetuses are being aborted every year in India after they identified that they're females. And according to the report of the government hospital of Tamil Nadu, out of 10 females born alive, four are put to death. If this evil practice of female infanticide and female feticide stops in India, even in India, in a few decades, the female population will outnumber the male population. Today, when we analyze throughout the world, there are more females as compared to males. In New York alone, there are 1 million females more than males. In USA alone, there are 7.8 million females more than males. In UK alone, there are 4 million females more than males. In Germany alone, there are 5 million females more than males. In Russia alone, there are 9 million females more than males. And God alone knows how many millions of females are more than the males throughout the world. If I agree with a non-Muslim, that every man should marry only one woman, and suppose my sister, or suppose your sister, happens to live in USA, and if the market is saturated, every woman has found a life partner for herself. Yet, there will be 7.8 million females who will not find husbands. And if, unfortunately, your sister or my sister happens to live in USA, and if she's amongst one of those 7.8 million females who has not found a husband, what's the option she has? The only option she has is that she either marries a man who already has a wife, 
or she becomes public property. Public property? Many people say, Dr. Zakir Nai, such a harsh word. It is the most sophisticated word I can use. I cannot think of a better word. There's no option. She either marries a man who already has a wife or becomes public property. In America, having mistresses is very common. The American statistics tell us, on an average, a man has eight different sexual partners before he settles down with one. Eight different. Some may have five, some may have ten, some may have twenty. Eight different sexual partners before he marries. After marry, how many has the statistics doesn't say that. But before he marries, he has on an average eight different sexual partners. Having mistresses in America is common, no problem. Ten, twenty, no problem. Having two wives doesn't go down the throat. You know, when a woman becomes the second wife of a man, she gets honor, she gets a right. She lives a very peaceful life with grace, with honor, with all her rights. And when a woman is a mistress, she doesn't get her rights. She has no protection. She leads a life of disgrace. Therefore, Islam permits some men to have more than one wife to protect the woman. And I do agree. If someone tells me that no woman would like to share the husband, I agree with them. I don't argue. I agree with you that no woman under normal circumstances would like to share the husband. But the Islamic Sharia says, let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. That means a good Muslim who knows the situation of the world would not mind sharing a husband to prevent her sister from becoming a public property. You ask any modest woman, would she prefer becoming the wife of a man who already has a wife or becoming public property, any modest woman would choose the first one.